Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. So the title of this session is on Apostles and Prophets. And so we're going to be looking um, the way, uh, the different texts in the Bible, seeing how the ministry of apostles and prophets are working together. And so in the life, in the body of Christ today, we, uh, there's very rec- very little recognition of the ministry of apostles and prophets and really seeing the reality of, of them, of those ministries working together. And even in my upbringing in, in the church, um, in the evangelical church, there was, we had pastors, there were some teachers, and a number of evangelists, but the ministry of apostles and prophets aren't recognized. But we see in the Bible that, that, that the ministry of apostles and prophets are clearly recognized. But, you know, we say we are believers in Jesus, and we see that this is in the Word of God. But where is it? Where, how are these ministries coming into the body of Christ? But we're going to see in this session that we're going to see how, why they are vital for us, and why we need them. So, we're going to see that God has pointed an order of apostles and prophets to be in the church so turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And Paul says, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. And the main thing that I want to bring out is that he says, first apostles, second prophets. Why would that be? Why? Paul obviously had a revelation of why he knew the truth that God has appointed first apostles and second prophets to be ministries in the church. And so if that is the case, there has to be clear uh, scriptural evidence for that to be true, to verify of what Paul is saying that God has appointed Apostles and prophets to be established in the church. So we're going to see in the Bible how this is true. So we're going to see that the appoint- since apostles are first appointed in the church, we're going to see that they were first appointed. And so we first come to Luke chapter 6, verses 12 to 16. Luke chapter 6, verses 12 to 16. And Jesus appointed... 12 apostles. Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 16. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself and from them he chose 12 whom he also named apostles. And so verses 14 to 16, we have the list of the 12 apostles out of the many disciples that Jesus had to be named as apostles. So, so the specific calling of an apostles was by name. God, uh, Jesus sought in the will of God by praying to know the will of the Father of which out of his disciples to be called as apostles. And so they were appointed by the Father, amen? But in the process, um, in Jesus' life, Judas betrays Jesus to bring Jesus to be crucified in the will of God. And, and so Judas fell from his position, uh, uh, fell from, this, from, from his ministry as an apostle. But as you see in Revelation chapter 20, 22, or 21, Verse, verse 14, that we see that in the New Jerusalem that there were 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So there need, needed to be 12 apostles of the Lamb. And we see that the need, that position that Judas fell needed to be replaced by somebody and so let's go to Acts chapter 1, 
verses 15 to 26, we see of how of who replaced Judas. Um, I'll just quickly read through the passage. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of, of the names was about a hundred and twenty, and said, "Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy spoke, Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth of David, concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field." With the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that field is called, in their own language, al Kodama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. And Peter says, Therefore of these men whom have accompanied us, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, being, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, and whose surname was Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Amen. So here we see the clear uh, choosing that Matthias was the one to replace Judas, and the qualification was that he, ha he had to have seen Jesus been from the beginning of his baptism to the day that Jesus ascended into heaven to be a witness of the resurrection of Jesus so that his life could be a testimony to the truth that of who Jesus is as the Messiah, the Son of God. Amen. And so we see that, that God first appointed apostles in the church. Amen? So that's very clear that God appointed apostles the ministry of apostles first. Amen. And so let's go on to the ministries of, of, of prophets. So from that time on, we, we, uh, let's come to Acts chapter 11 of the ministries of prophets rising up in the church. Acts chapter 11, verse 27 to 30. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch, so, so here we, we see prophets, plural. So a number of prophets were being raised up in, in Jerusalem and were being sent to Antioch. Yep. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the, to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This this they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So, what can we get out of this, this passage? So, we have the first uh, mention of people who were prophets in the congregation of Jerusalem, and Agabus is, is, is mentioned by name. And he shows them by the Spirit that there's going to be a great famine in the land. So, what, what do we get out of out of the prophet of Agabus, what, what did he bring as a, pro as a prophet to the body of Christ? He showed them by the Spirit of what was going to be happening. So the gift of the, of the prophet is very vital for us to be, to be alert and to be warned of what is going to be happening so that we, so when, when disaster strikes, we can, be, we can be secure because God has given us provision through the mouth of a prophet. So this, is, this should be very help, um, helpful for us to receive a prophet and that God is raising up prophets from, the, from amongst us. Amen? Amen. So now, uh, next, next mention of, of prophets. Turn to Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas... 
Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. So here we have a list of, of prophets and teachers and the eldership of Antioch. And it mentions uh, Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Menaean, and Saul. But the scriptures don't tell us of what Simeon, Lucius, and Menaean would have functioned in, but they were either prophets or teachers. But we can find out about Barnabas and Saul. And so Paul is mentioned as a teacher in his, in his own epistles in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7, and 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. So Paul obviously would have functioned as a teacher at this time. And a little bit about Barnabas. Barnabas is first mentioned in Acts chapter 4, verse 36. And we can learn about what Barnabas would have functioned as. Acts chapter 4, verse 36. Uh, and Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. So Barnabas', Barnabas his real name was actually Joseph, but the apostles named, named Joseph as Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And as we read in and in First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse three, that that um, mm. prophets, that prophecy brings encouragement and exhortation. First Corinthians chapter four, verse three. But he who prophesies speaks. Fourteen. First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse three. But he who prophesies speaks edification an exhortation and comfort to men. So we see that from Barnabas' life, the reason why he was called son of encouragement because in the gift and the ministry that he was functioning was bringing comfort and exhortation to the brethren. And so that's very aware by the apostles that, that uh, this was his functioning as a prophet. And actually, if you translate the, the name Barnabas, it actually means son of a prophet. So... That was a clear recognition of Barnabas functioning as a prophet. And, if we, and from Acts 13 on, we see that, uh, from, that from that ministering to the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to them to, to separate Paul and Barnabas to the ministry that, that God had called them to now function into the gift of apostles. And in Acts chapter 14, verse 14, uh, it is accounted that, that they're clearly named as apostles. Barnabas and Paul both are being named as apostles. So Paul and Barnabas, both uh, apostles, but Paul function, has the gift of, of the teaching ministry and Barnabas as an apostle functioning in the prophetic ministry. Amen. So we see there's apostles and prophets working together. And now we'll see even more clear... Uh, distinct accounts of apostles and prophets functioning together. So turn with me to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verse 30 to 35. Acts chapter 15, verse 30 to 35. So when they were sent off, this is talking about Judas, Silas, Paul, and Silas, which I will get to in a moment. They came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter, this letter that was, was given to them, which we can read in verse 23 to 29. And now Judas and Silas, well, when they had read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas, themselves being prophets also, exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. That we see again, the, the, the ministry of, prof, of prophets was bringing exhortation and strengthening the brethren with, with many words. So there's a lot of encouraging and strengthening in people's hearts. So you can see that the grace that a prophet has is to bring exhortation and strength and comfort to people. Amen? So it's really good that we receive the ministry gift of prophets. And after, after they had stayed there for a, a time... They were sent back with the greetings from the brethren to the apostles. 
However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. So here we see that Silas chose to stay in Antioch, and we see that apostles and, and with, with uh, Paul, and si and Paul and Barnabas as apostles, they're working, working together in, in Antioch and, and, and releasing the grace. But with, with this letter that they were sent to Antioch, because of uh, false brethren telling, telling them that they had to be circumcised and that they had to keep the law of Moses to be saved, but we see uh, they were sent with this letter to bring this exhortation, encouragement. And so we see that, that these prophets were sent with, with the apostles Paul and, and Barnabas to the brethren in Antioch to bring this correction that these false brethren had brought in about being legalistic and, and keeping the law of Moses to be circumcised. And so it, we can read verse 28 and 29 from Acts chapter 15. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit to, to us and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these things, you will do well. Farewell. So they were sent with this letter to bring exhortation and correction. And so these prophets were, were even confirming the apostolic word, the, the word that they carried and bringing understanding to the brethren. Amen? So we see apostles and prophets functioning together. And then from, from verse 40 and onwards to, I'm just going to uh, briefly share on, on this, that, uh, that Silas um, stayed, uh, worked with Paul um, after Barnabas and Paul were divided up because Paul wanted to go on another, sec uh, on another mission trip to bring, uh, to see how the brethren were doing from his first uh, ministry trip, but uh, Barnabas wanted to take his wanted to take Mark with them, who was previously on their first ministry trip, but but Mark but Mark left them, and Paul didn't want that, and so that brought the vision, and he took Silas, who's a pro who's who's a prophet, to go on with him on his second missionary trip. So Paul, we see again in the church that the ministry of apostles and prophets are working together. Amen. And just another account in Acts chapter 21, verse, 18, verse 8 to 14. Acts chapter 21, verse 8 to 14. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now when, when we heard these things, both we and those who from, from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he would not be persuaded, we cease saying, The will of the Lord be done. Just in this text, we see again, uh, we, have, we have an evangelist, Philip the evangelist, with his four virgin daughters who, are who have the gift of prophesying. And, and, and so Paul comes, comes to his house, and then Agabus, a prophet whom we learned about just before, come together in, in the house meeting, and, and there's prophetic words given. So this, we can see that, the funk, that in the church... The, there's a ministry of prophets and apostles working together and 
the will of the Lord is being, being revealed and an action has taken place. Amen. So we see clear examples of God uh, appointing apostles and prophets throughout time from, from the, the apostles that Jesus appointed and, and onwards of how God was raising up prophets, apostles and prophets in the body of believers in Jesus. Amen. So next we're going to see a couple of different verses of where apostles and prophets are mentioned together. So my first point is that apostles and prophets are foundational ministries. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. So Paul really had this revelation of apostles and prophets working together in the body. So, so he says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So in, con in context of Ephesians chapter 2, we see that, uh, that apostles and prophets are foundational ministries in the body of Christ. And in context, it's, it's bringing people to that revelation that both Jews and Gentiles in Christ Jesus both ha are, are partakers of the covenants of promise that can receive and that is through Christ, through the blood of Christ, that we both now by one spirit have access to the Father. So these apostles and, and prophets bring that ministry to bring that revelation that everybody who, who comes to believe in Jesus the Messiah can have access to God by one spirit that can come to know the Father in Jesus the Messiah. So, and so they, they bring the revelation of Jesus and so bringing us into that linking of Jesus as our chief cornerstone. We're being fitted together into Him to be a, being built, in whom being the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, verse 21 and 22, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So apostles and prophets, they bring that revelation that in Christ we become a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Next point. Apostles and prophets are given grace to reveal the knowledge of the mystery. So we just read on from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So apostles and prophets, they, they, they're given grace to, to bring people to this revelation of the mystery that is in Christ. This fellowship of the mystery as he says later on in, in verse 8 and 9. To me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Messiah. To make all see what is this fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which, God, which He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So apostles and prophets, they bring this revelation, us, they're bringing us who believe in Jesus to, bring, uh, to give us understanding. They're given this grace to, so that we could experience this. This, this fellowship that we have in Jesus Christ. No matter who we are, that, that we have all different, different backgrounds, that we become one in Christ. And that we share this fellowship of experiencing of Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're all experiencing this reality that now our, our new identity is in Christ. It's no longer from our cultural backgrounds where we grew up in, but coming to know the truth that we have access to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so next on, next point, apostles and prophets come with the authority of Messiah's ascension. So in next chapter in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, again, apostles and prophets are mentioned together. 
And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. So, from Jesus' ascension, he has released grace to the body. He gave gifts to men from his ascension, from the place of, of all authority in heaven on earth. And so grace comes from heaven. And so he's given his body these gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And they're given us, and, and they release this grace of Christ to us for the purpose, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints. So bringing believers, uh, to bring them into to functioning so that they can function, equipping them for, for service, for the work of the ministry, so that these ministries are doing the work of the ministry that, that Jesus has given them, the grace that they've been given, and for edifying of the body of Messiah. So that continually releasing the grace to building up, as we know that, that the prophetic grace is to bring comfort, exhortation, and strength to the body. So that is receiving the life of Christ, the grace that they release, so that we can receive that impartation of Christ in us, and that we are being built up for the purpose, verse 13, till we all come to the unity or the oneness of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we see that we need to receive this grace of apostles and prophets so that we come to this revelation. And, and, I, was just, and I was receiving that when, when Nick was, was sharing that the grace that he that as, as an apostle and even with Paul the grace that they receive from Christ, that they are building us up. And amongst all the grace that, that, that God has released even in the midst of us, Amen. to be building us up and setting us at liberty and to bring clear revelation of everything that we have in Christ. Amen. 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 And so it's, it's bringing us up to that, to, to that, to that perfect man. We see, we see the grace that, that Jesus has given us. It's releasing the grace of His glory in us. And it's building us up to, be, to transform our lives, to, to really behold Jesus for who He is. And so we see, so again we see that, that Jesus has released the gift of apostles and prophets from His ascension. And they release His grace. So I'm going to quickly mention some other verses that mention apostles and prophets. So have a look in Luke chapter 11, verse 49. So these are other, other verses mentioned of apostles and prophets. Luke chapter 11, verse 49. And therefore the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute. So Jesus, in this setting, he is... He's Sitting with, he's sitting down in a house with, with lawyers and scribes and Pharisees. And he's talking to, to the lawyers at this time. And in verse 47 he says, Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers. For they indeed killed them, and you build their tombs. And then Jesus says that verse in 49. And we'll read verse 50. To, four, to 52, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah who perished between the altar and the temple. Yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Why am I saying this? Why, why did Jesus say that he will send apostles and prophets whom they would kill? Because he's saying that, that these, these, lo these lawyers... They're saying that, that if we would have lived during the times of their forefathers who killed the prophets, they would have never done it. But, but because who were the prophets testifying of? They were testifying of Jesus coming. And, but they didn't recognize Jesus standing right in front of them whom they were waiting for. And so they weren't receiving Jesus. And so he's saying that, that, that they're... In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers. Because they weren't receiving of, they were doing, they weren't receiving of what their forefathers weren't receiving. 
They weren't receiving the ones that the prophets were testifying of. And so Jesus says that the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and, pro and apostles. And of them, they will kill and persecute. Why? Because they still testify of who Jesus is. So the calling of apostles and prophets is not a ministry that we should be taken on lightly for our own personal means. It's a serious calling to really consider the, the burden that even the, the possibility of, of putting your life on the line to be killed and persecuted. So, so, but we need to receive because they will bring the revelation of Christ. Amen. Another verse, Revelation chapter 18, verse 20. Yeah. So it says, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. So this verse is in the context of Babylon falling, which is, which is the city of confusion. Babylon means confusion. And so, why, why would apostles and prophets be rejoicing in the, in the sight of Babylon falling? Because God is avenging for them. Because apostles and prophets are come to testify the truth of who Jesus is. And so, because they, do not, they didn't receive their word, God is bringing vengeance on the city of Babylon but on the world system of keeping people in confusion of the truth. And so, apostles and prophets, they're desi they're, they come to represent, to bring the revelation of Jesus the Messiah because He is the truth. Jesus is the truth. And so, so yeah, apostles and prophets, we need, we can see that from we can now see the reason that and the necessity to receive God's holy apostles and prophets so that we can come to the full knowledge of who Jesus is as the Messiah and so that our eyes, our, our spiritual eyes are beyond veiled to the truth of who Jesus is, of who He is as the Messiah and to be encouraged and built up in Him and by the grace and equipping that the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives so that we can stand solidly in the faith, and now know our place in the body of Messiah. God bless you. Yeah.